So good morning to everyone here and thank you Dr. Rekha and uh, also thank my colleague uh, who are present here. Um, huh? Yes, yes, and there are some PhD scholars. Uh, welcome everybody. Um, social work in India has an interesting history, a long history, also interesting history. Now the history we get to read, yes, as a history. But that does not mean that is the only history. That does not mean that is the only history that should be made part of social work history. Right? Um, I know as students of social work, by now you are very familiar with what social work is all about. Um, because of my long disassociation from social work, uh, in terms of the school I am affiliated to, um, I need to brush up a little bit. But since I have been invited here and there uh, to speak about social work and its implications, I have some basics. So let me start with that basics and then we'll come to the present subject. Every discipline, unlike other discipline, social work is said to be a very human discipline. It's dedicated to human service, uh, to mitigate human suffering and so on. So it has got its own what you call core values of social work. And as you know, the first value is service. Uh, there are other values like social justice, human dignity, uh, importance of dignity and importance of human relationship, um, competency, integrity, and there are few additions like human rights and so on. So anybody who claims to be a social worker is expected to be completely devoted to adhere to these values. Now, service is a value, social justice is a value, importance of human dignity and relationship are values. You will in general agree, the moment you say Indian culture, Indian ethics, what is the root of this culture? What is the root of these ethics? Invariably, it comes from the religion we belong to. I hope there is no disagreement on this. And when you say again religion, you would say that India is not a country of one religion. There are multiple religions. But you name any religion in the world, you will find in India or probably you, you name any problem in the world, you will find in India. So that way we are a country of very uh, rich in every respect that probably any illness you think of, that also we have. And India is also is a country where you will find great personalities who, whose service to this nation cannot be measure, measured actually. So, there, are, there are great individuals. Now, the moment he says social work values, it comes primarily from the religion a vast majority of this country belong to, which means Hinduism, for example. Why I am seeing vast majority? As per the census record, over 84%, over 84% of the Indian population is a Hindu population. And you have around 11 to 12% is a Muslim population. And the rest is the other minority religion, like right? Christians, Buddhism, Sikhism, Jainism, and so on. So that's how the overall 100% population in India. So, and if you look at the history of social work, those who wrote on social work, uh, belonging to our own nations, they have taken inspiration from Hinduism. I have noted down here some of those things here. But due to paucity of time, I'm not going to read out unless it is required. So now I also get to read these days that we need to, social workers in India need to go back to Indian roots. And the claim is that the social work has, is not rooted in Indian ethos, in Indian culture, Indian religions, because it has borrowed from America. It has fallen from Europe, British, 
so it is not suitable to indian reality so we need to go back to our own roots you have uh, some basic reading like ar wadia uh, christian philosophy of social work it is a edited book uh, so many all top ranking social workers in the uh, uh, from 50s onwards have contributed articles in that book it's a old book but it's worth looking at it all of you where it's clearly written that hinduism is the basis of social work and the social work when you say the first value of social work is service and it is linked to charity and charity is linked to religion it is not only indian history if you look at european history of social work or american history of social work charity has been the beginning and the charity is linked to religion um, so you cannot look at social work from ignoring religion and we all indians by and large we are all very religious people nothing wrong in it absolutely we need to be really now when we take up positions that we knew we need to go back to indian roots indian core values that should be made the social work core values what comes to your mind when you say the majority is a hindu populations so therefore the core values of social work should be rooted in the hindu values and system and if you ask further what is the hindu value and customs and uh, air wadia clearly says that indian social work is primarily a gandhian social work and when you say gandhian social work probably one is secularism where integration of all religions but then the fact that a vast majority 80 above percent of population is a hindu populations and our core values come from hindu philosophy and hindu philosophy basically means besides many other things varnashrama dharma varnashrama dharma is directly linked to what we call as caste system the varnashrama dharma the codification of varnashrama dharma you will see from what is known as manus code of conduct manus smriti which has codified what should be the behavior of people belonging to different varnas right what should be the behavior of when men towards the women that that has also been codified what should be the status and power of different varnas when you say varnas brahmin kshatriya vaishya shudras and it another category called ati shudras and who are considered to be now the scheduled caste whom mahatma gandhi called as harijans and they are also popularly known as dalits and so on in 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 the scripture if you look at they are called avarnas mean people without varna people outside the varna and they are all called panchamas fifth varnas each of these term is political when you say fifth varna brahma created only four varnas first varna brahmin from the mouth of brahman kshatriya from the arms of brahman vaishya from the thighs of brahma and the shudra from the feet of brahma then what about there are four varna that now you are called panchama fifth varna that fifth varna is a, now the contemporary current should should cast where did they come from brahma created only up to shudra now this new category is called schedule caste brahma did not create how will you make them a hindu so you have no option we have to come out with some new story and the manus interpretation of it they are illegitimate children born to shudra men and brahmin women it's a new interpretations now when you say core values that social work took take its core values from hinduism and which which primarily means varnashrama dharma now varnashrama dharma says brahmin should not interact kshatriya kshatriya should not interact with vaishya and vaishya should not interact with the shudra and shudra should not interact with the so called ati shudras but if you come from the top they can interact and they can do whatever they want with the varna below but if it cannot go the reverse ati shudras cannot interact with the shudra shudra should not interact with the vaishya vaishya cannot with the kshatriya and kshatriya cannot with the brahmins so this is how the code of conduct have been written now can we make this 
as code of conduct, core values of social work. I am asking this is the fundamental point. Can we make this conception as core values of social work? That is a fundamental question that comes to my mind. These six values which we have, which has an under, which has, there is a consensus on this globally. If you, if you look at the um, Council of Social Work in the United States, which has a membership of over 2,500 social work institutions, they have agreed on these six core values that we say. We have also agreed. Probably that is the reason now today we are saying now we should go back to our own roots, our own religion, and we should have our values based on Hindu Varnashrama Dharma. But this Hindu Varnashrama Dharma means there should be no right to women. Constitution recognizes right to women, but Hindu Varnashrama Dharma does not recognize. Now, between this Constitution and the Varnashrama, what do we make? consider or accept as values of social work. Is there a contradiction there? The constitution says liberty, equality, fraternity. Everybody should have equal right on liberty, equality, fraternity. But if you go by the Varnashrama Dharma, it is not everybody. Everybody does not have that right. Between these two conceptions, which one we will accept? Right? Or the another, another major uh, tenet of uh, uh, Hinduism what you call other ashramas, that you have a, every Hindu must pass through these four stages. Uh, Grahastha ashrama, meaning it is a period of learning. Every child must be uh, uh, going to a um, Gurukul system and spend his first 25 years at the feet of a guru and learn everything. Then from 25 to say up to 50 years, he has to lead his family life, get married, rear children, and so on. And after 50 to say 70, you give up from family life. From 70 onwards, you become a sannyasi. Now, this sounds very nice, every Hindu. Now, if you ask critically, because social workers are supposed to be rational and logical in their thinking, not a blind believer of whatever is given to you. I suppose you agree with me this, right? Social workers are supposed to be scientific, rational and logical in their thinking. They should be so or not. You agree? Yes. So given that agreement, when ashrama says, who will go to a Gurukul? It is only Brahmin. Or the so-called Avarna, Brahmin, Chatriya, Vaishya. What about the Shudra who constitute more than 50 percent populations and the so-called Adhishudra constitute another 15 to 16 percent. So roughly around 75 percent population is kept out of Gurukul system. When is, and then of course entire women should not go to Gurukul. So 80 percent nearly out of education. What kind of a development we are talking about? Do we accept that as a core value of social work? or you follow the internationally recognized core values. There is nothing absolutely wrong. We must take our core values from our own traditions. But when our own tradition has these kind of shortcomings, what to do? Probably somebody dare to go against those traditions. For example, Buddha. I said, yeah, nothing can be created out of nothing. You can create always something out of something. It is not somebody shows hand, bacha ajata hai. That's what we are told. And this is the common thing in every religion. God comes and he creates so many things. But science does not show that you can create something by showing hand or even imagining about Nothing comes. Right? Till date, scientists could not do that by just showing hand. But we have come to that level by showing a remote. We are able to on the radio. We are able to on the... Uh, TV, we are able to send satellites, but that with the imagination, bacha paida nahi kar sakte. Right. So that is what, uh, do we accept such speculations as part of social work principles and values? This comes. Then if you go back to 
uh, Indian core values. We also have another two major issues. What is called karma? That's karma theory or transmigration theory. That after death, your soul enters some other body. And once you die, you have a rebirth. And the rebirth depends on what you do at this point in time. Your current karma, what you do today will determine what kind of person you will become after death. So you have any idea of what will happen after death? Or are you worried what will happen after my death? Or you are worried about what will happen next class? As human beings, we are worried about the present. We are not worried about the past. We are not worried about the what would happen after death. Do you agree? So this kind of thinking, of course, it's logical. If a woman are told, you are born women because in your last birth, you did a lot of nonsense. And that is why God has demoted you from men's status to women's status. So if you want to be promoted as men in the next birth, what do you have to do? Glorify when the husband beats you. Be happy. Husband is beating you because basically he is helping you to be born in the next birth as men. So you should be thankful to your husband who beats you on a daily, on a daily basis. Now if this is what karma is all about, everything is you know given uh, in air what he has book itself. That if you are a beggar today, that means you did something badmashi in the last. Another example given, if you are a prostitute in this birth, that means you did something wrong in the past. And if you want to become a very divine woman in the next birth, you accept being a prostitute and you enjoy doing that. If you are a chore, again, everything related to karma and the result of karma will be in the next birth. So, on the, you see the contradiction in the social work. Social work values is social justice and social workers are change agent. Your karma says today whatever you are, it is the result of your karma. And if you don't revolt, you are sure your problem will be solved in the next birth. But social workers are saying you must bring social change. Which goes against your own belief system. Social workers are told you you are the change agent, so you must follow social justice. And you should be worried about, about, uh, about the dignity, human relationship. But according to karma theory, it's there in the Yarwadiya's book, you should not worry about it. So that means, as a social worker devoted to Indian values, you cannot do anything. Once it's very clear that whatever you are today, it is a result of your past, and whatever you are doing today will be determined in the future, what is the need of a social worker then? Right? So if you are, if you happen to be Tata Institute students or any other social students, you are still trying to do some social justice, you are trying to change, you are trying to give importance to human relationship. That means you are going against the natural law. Natural law, Gandhi said these are all natural law. Mahatma Gandhi said these are all natural laws. If you are going against the natural law, you are surely will go to hell. You definitely your promotion in the next person is not possible. All these things are there. Now, in such a conception of what should be social, what should be the root of social work, where will you draw your social work values from? <coughs> what is the way out? Constitution clearly says that every individual has a right to liberty, equality, social justice, fraternity, irrespective of your caste, religious, sexual orientations. But if you go by Hindu values, your class is your own, within your own caste. You can't think of going across your own caste. You have to do everything within. And Gandhi gave a very nice interpretation. Caste is nothing but extension of your own family system. What you do in family, you have everything is within the family. You, you don't go beyond that. Caste is also like that only. Ambedkar calls caste 
as an open class. Sorry, caste is an enclosed class and class is an open caste. Meaning, class, in class difference you have only two categories, rich and poor may be the middle class. But the poor can become a middle class and the middle can, class can become a rich. But within the caste structures, once you are a born a Brahmin, you remain a Bra Brahmin, you die a Brahmin. There can be no possibility of shifting from the caste you are born with. There is no, no change. Similarly, once you are born as so-called Dalits, you remain a Dalit, you die as a Dalit. There can be no possibility of change. So, you have a one option where it gives an option for every individual to come up in life. You have a, within the caste structure, you are condemned. So far, we have since independence, we have followed the preamble of the constitution and whatever guarantee the constitution gives and we have followed that willy-nilly with a lot of hesitations, unwillingness. We have implemented a lot of provisions uh, enshrined in the constitutions and probably both men and women, boys and girls are sitting here. Probably if we had followed our religious roots, I am sure there may be no girl sitting here in this hall. All men, boys would be sitting here. So between two options, what do you want to take it up? So this is a big question before the entire social professions. Whether you should be dedicated to your value system rooted in your religion or you should be dedicated to value system which are universally accepted. And we have followed that path so far. The upward mobility that we have achieved as women, as Shidulkas, as Shudras, this has been possible because we have taken our core values of social work from an universal understanding of what justice, what social justice, what is right and wrong. What is See, many things that in our, if you take on the religious roots, the religion defines what is virtues and vices in its, in, in its own um, uh, parameters that vary across religion. The tragedy here, which religion you follow? What is considered the right in one religion need not be in another religion considered the right. Right to education in one religion supposed to be given to one particular section. But if you go to another religion, right to education should be open to everybody. And in India we have both the type of religions. Which religion to follow? Buddhism also, because we define that Christianity and Islam are not Indic religions. Whereas Hinduism, its earlier name I would say Brahminism, Sikhism, they are called Indic religions. Buddhism is also Indic religions, but Sikhism and Buddhism challenged what Brahminism advocated. But these, these are all Indian religions. Where will you get your core values from? You will take your core values from Buddhism, you take your core values from Sikhism, or you take it from uh, Brahminism, now called Hinduism. So there is a contradiction there. Buddhism negates whatever given in the Brahminism. Sikhism negates whatever given in the Brahminism. So is the case with the Christianity and Islam. Sorry. So we are stuck there. Then it may amount to this is the social workers completely Brahmin dominated profession it has. It will become. So that is why life whether you are an Indian or a European or American, all of us have problems. If I went to Colombia, after going there in the Colombia University, there are also one fellow singing, oh, nobody is loving me. So I thought it's only Indian problem. There in America also the same problem. The boys in desperate condition singing song. So as human beings, we are the same. Wherever you go, some basic nature are very common. Now, somebody says only 
women should have no right and that is what the religion codifies and you have to take this thing from that religion can be very dangerous it will take us back board in the history i like to read few things it may sound that i am portraying gandhi in a wrong thing but this is what a vast majority seems to be following till date and uh, and gandhi is not an ordinary person uh, he is a father of nation um with regard to caste system which is in my opinion is the core symbol of hinduism so many people have said and if not hindu caste system can you define hinduism without caste system nothing and uh, our our uh, dedication to caste values determination to protect caste structures is so much we even go to the extent of killing our own children if they eloped with the person of an another caste right so many killings you have a, uh, there, uh, even even tamil nadu there are districts where this inter caste marriages uh, are uh, you know they end up getting killed haryana and many other states are also known for it uh, gandhi once said i believe caste has saved hinduism from disintegration and ambedkar said caste has been annihilated and and mahatma gandhi says caste system has protected hinduism between these two conception which will you, where will you go both are reformer both are revolutionary both fought for these nations gandhi took his inspiration from religion whereas ambedkar took his inspiration from of course from religion but that's called buddhism buddhism and brahmanism they are opposite to each other in every respect but some of us follow gandhi in line some of us follow ambedkar in line but ultimately we have to live together living together because both are indian citizens and there is a social contract is necessary contract is necessary between these two set of people and that is why the constitution is there now suddenly if i say no no can't throw the constitution i will go by this logic at stage will come we will kill each other in the so called nation that we are imagining will disintegrate and we land up nowhere so gandhi but like every other institutions it has suffered from um, ex uh, excesses i consider the four uh, divisions alone to be the fundamental four division mean brahman kshatriya vaishya shudra natural and they are essential the innumerable subcaste are sometimes a convenience often but often hindrances the sooner there is fusion the better it is the thousands of sub subcaste that we are divided into today they should be fusion come together into that earlier four varnas now if you have to say they have to come together where will the, the so called dalits will go because they were never part of the four varna they are separated they will go into the brahmin varna or they will go to kshatriya varna they will go to vaishya varna or they will go to shudra where they will go either everybody will say no don't come here so they will remain a independent religion that was also the demand of ambedkar on one of my uh, correspondents suggests that we should abolish caste but adopt the class system of europe meaning thereby i suppose that the idea of heredity in caste should be rejected caste means heredity if i am a potter my children should also be a potter if i am a shoemaker my children should also be a shoemaker i am a preacher my children should also be a preacher this is what uh, the caste system varna all those things but you will find you see how contradiction how unnatural in our thinking the caste system you will find in our own families when there are three children four children two children each child is a unique child parents may be illiterate the son may become a professor like my own case and there may be many such case but just because parents are illiterate to say that children all will be buddhu that's the most idiotic understanding but if you go by this varna sharma philosophy that's what the right thing is about 
and in within that same family four children one will want to become a musicians another wants to become intellectual another wants to become a sports person another wants to become a scholar or scientist but to think that all brahmins children within that same family of a brahmin everybody would like to be only a pujari will that happen in four children one family because father is a pujari do you think all the children would prefer to become a pujari the current uh, scenario or many uh, our our own day to day understanding does not prove that never logic same family four children four different aspirations but that that is the reality but if you say that all brahmin should be only a pujari nothing else mahatma gandhi himself is a vaishya he should be doing only danda but he was a barista he was a law he was a preacher he was an advocate he was more than a pujari he was giving advice to pujaris so he himself has violated the dharma of varnashrama how do you expect that everybody should be within their caste fold should not think anything else other than this is it not something fundamentally wrong ideally you should be doing only danda but he became a preacher he became a advisor to brahmins he what not he was a law maker and social activist everything he did so going by human nature this law of varna varnashrama is unscientific illogical how so ever how much so ever gandhi says it is natural law no it is not possible um so instead of going by that hereditary Uh, meaning thereby i suppose that the idea of hereditary in caste should be rejected so gandhi was not in agreement i am inclined to think that the law of heredity is an eternal law and any attempt to alter that law must lead us as it has before led to alter uh, confusion con- uh, confusion if hindus believe as they must believe in reincarnation hindu must believe in reincarnation and transmigration they must know that nature will without any possibility of mistake adjust the balance by uh, degrading a brahmin if he misbehaves um, himself by rein- uh, reincarnating him in a lower divisions and and translating uh, one who lives in the life of a brahmin in his present incarnation to, uh, to Bra- meaning that if a brahmin does not follow his hereditary occupations or if he does not behave what the way is expected to behave he will become a shudra in the next birth so he is a firm believer of this so similarly if a shudra does not behave the way is expected to behave as per the hindu law the next time he will become probably ati shutras so as a hindu you must believe in reincarnation you must believe in karma this is what gandhian philosophy but we have been following gandhian social work if you have to follow gandhian philosophy here there is no need of social work because what you do what you are today is the result of what you were in the past my basic doubt in the that brahma's creation relating to karma is we agree that your present is based on your past deeds agreed there is no doubt just hypothetical we agree when brahma created first time he created the universe ah uh, he created the universe then he created the brahmin first from his mouth chatra from his arms and vaisha from the thighs and shudra from the beet feet first time when you are creating what is the basis on which you consider some as superior and some as inferior in the next year you can do evaluation uh, you can look at the performance of those brahmin chatriya vaisha and then you decide with whom to promote whom to demote but you are creating for the first time on what basis you created somebody as superior and what is created somebody inferior there is fundamental wrong fundamentally wrong with that very conception do you agree with this 
When the Brahma has already created somebody superior and somebody inferior, what social workers have any right to even think differently? If you are a true Hindu, then you shut your mouth. You are not expected to do any social work. If you know, no, I will do social work, I will promote sudras, I will promote the rights of women, that means you are an anti-Hindu. That is the logic, right? As social workers, we follow certain principles and scientific thinking. If you go by that logic, that means invariably you are going against the will of God. And that means you are an anti-Hindu. Anti-Hindu can also be, you know, taken as whatever you can, I leave it to you. So, if we say that if the core values of social work, which is universally accepted, I don't think there is anything wrong in those core values. Now, if we say that you have to go to, you have to, tra your, your roots of value should be rooted in, in your religion, then it is, the question comes, which religion? India is not one religion. India, India is a, a country of multiple religions. You will take your core values from Hinduism, which means, Shudra, Vaishya, Brahmin, Kshatriya, remain wherever you are, don't move. Then there is no need of Tata Institute. Then there is no need of you sitting here, myself talking here. Because everything will be taken care of by the nature. Upparwala sab dekh raha hai, he will decide. So the social work, social action, social work method is pura useless. Right? Hum kidar kyun beta hai? You have wasted your time. All of you have wasted my, your time. Because what you do, will decide your future. You want to be promoted in the next birth, something else, or you want to remain, or even want to be demoted. What you are doing right now, you are laying foundation for your demotion, according to <laughs> Varna Sharma Dharma. And if you want to be promoted, or especially I am I'm concerned about the girl students sitting here, you want to be promoted as boys next birth, you should not be sitting here. Perhaps you go back and do your kitchen work and if any men beat you, we say very nice. That's what it says. But social work principle says, these principles we are following at, at, at this point in time, it says the importance of human relationship, the imp importance of human dignity. You are, you are supposed to follow that. But going by Varna Sharma, your importance of human dignity, the dignity of a man is different from the dignity of the women. Then what is, where, the, where will go the social work? They are fundamentally very seriously wrong with such an understanding. And that is why at least universalization of certain values would help by and large for the promotion of everybody. But your basis of what considered core values, if it is rooted in local norms, when I say local norms, for example, caste is a local norms, because that decides differently, then there is a danger of the subjugation being perpetuated. All these years it will continue to be perpetuated. Individual liberty is a universal core values. Now, in the Varnashrama, there is no individual. It is only a collective, a group, a collective consciousness. It's not an entity. So again, you will find there is an um, uh, argument between Gandhi and Ambedkar. Gandhi says, you are nobody. You are an element within the society. So you should not ask for anything for yourself. You are here to protect the structure, existing structure. So, within that, you are a small element. So, don't claim for any individual right. Don't claim for any individual right. Your right is based on the collective uh, entity. So that is why it is always used in a systemic theory. In a system, every part is important, but that every part should play only that role. Every part in a system should play, if that part tries to play some other role, the system will collapse. So similarly, Indian society, human society or Hindu society, there is a role allocated to everybody. There is a role to women, there is a role to men, there is a role to children. They have to do only that job. As a woman, in the interest of the society, in the interest of the family, 
you never think of going to a college never think of going for a college education don't education is not required because if the family has to be protected somebody should be at home to cook look after children so that is you have so much time so you, you remain at home there is no need of education for you so education is required for people who have to bring money so men will go to college they will go and study they will get job they will bring money your only job is to satisfy the men rear children and cook if you don't do that if you try to do what the men, men are supposed to do then this system family as a unit will collapse there is a law and order problem will happen so that is called the systemic theory every part in the system has a specific role that role only that particular part should play don't change that role but social work says every individual is unique you see the problem every psychology says freud says every individual is unique and aristotle says every individual has the capacity to acquire knowledge aristotle says every species has a capacity to acquire knowledge but varnashrama says no only men have capacity to acquire knowledge women keep quiet what do you want to follow so i think um i have uh, uh, what is the time uh, professor rig 12:30 um so maybe we'll take few questions then i'll come again i think i i think i have proved enough the purpose of this is to make you think not to go for a facebook immediately professor rama has said and the goes on uh, that's what usually you do and you make the discussion useless i hope you don't do that uh, uh yes questions please feel free i absolutely no hesitation nobody is going to grade you based on the kind of question you ask please do ask you whether you want to go for a universal understanding of what should be the values of social work or it should be rooted in the indian tradition which is rooted in a particular religion that is what the current agenda there is a new trend of social work coming up so what is your uh, uh, response to that yes please you were talking about varna dharma ashrama you were only talking about the negative aspects of it hindu religion yes there are many things like community based and everything which does not cover the universal system does not cover because uh, if you will look at them they look at the problems individually but our society is that is in that state that every problem is related to the larger context the larger structure we are only looking at the individual level as the uh, universal system dictates then we will not be able to truly root out the problem and even if we are talking about how uh, banu said this and varna ashrama dharma but there is also some positive aspects how that, like in muslim religion also there is the eid eid ka we give charity is there in hindu religion also the charity is there we should Obviously, every religion has some negative aspects and positive aspects. We should take up the positive aspects. Absolutely fine, but do we take the positive aspect? That is a question. Why not? Huh? Why not? Like. Uh... Listen, listen, listen. I fully agree with you. If you take the positive aspect, there may not be any incidents of rape and murder, right? Inside the religious places, if you as you you are different, you may be very progressive. I may be very progressive. but the larger society larger reality show something else people commit atrocities people practice untouchability yes sir uh, address that untouchability we have to address that problem and that is rooted in hindu religion if you are not looking if you have to convince that like, if you have to convince someone of uh, to make positive change like for especially for a hindu group yeah. then we have to talk them in their language if you are talking something in western philosophy you will not Okay, in their language means uh, you you. Yeah, what they and what their beliefs are. Yeah, yeah. Suppose if somebody beats me, I'll beat him. Th- that is their language. <laughs> yeah, what is that? What is their language? Yeah. If somebody rapes me, I'll rape them. What is their language means? Language means what are the belief systems, the positive beliefs in their religion? 
Nobody, bought, nobody see it. You listen. There is some concept like Vasudeva Kutumpaka. Right? You are familiar, right? So, I don't treat only my own people nearby as family. The whole world is a family. My, my heart is open to the global community. Right? When you are willing to treat people across the world as your part of family, your own neighbor, he came with a chapel slipper, he walked in your street, he was beaten to death. Now you are seeing, I am open to the global family, you are not ready to treat your own fellow citizens stating in the very next house in your own street because he was wearing a chapel. What is the contradiction? And, and, and if you say, if you treat the, uh, the whole world as one family, we should not have sent the British out of our India. Na? <laughs> British were colonizer. We could have stayed with them very nicely because they are also part of family members. Why we send them? Why we chase them? Because they were exploiting us. Right? No, you, if you are looking at that chapel, he was treated by chapel, huh? then we are generalizing the problem. We are thinking, uh, we are assuming that this will happen with everyone. That they, we are not seeing them as capable of changing. You know, only after acknowledging that there is a problem and acknowledging there there is a positive value then only we will take it to my my problem is for example my problem is you are my problem listen you are my problem you are not willing to change you continue to behave the way you want what should i do you are willing to change see a ignorant person if a ignorant person if you teach them he will become conscious he will stop doing it or somebody who is really sleeping you just say get up he will get up Somebody pretending to be sleeping, how much you beat that he will be doing more snoring. He will not get up. Our problem is we are pretending to be sleeping. Actually we are awake. We know what is the problem but we don't want to change. Because that is why Ambedkar says people have vested interest in caste. I am a Brahmin, I am going out, everybody say Namaste Panditji. I am an illiterate person, still somebody will call me Namaste Panditji. Why should I give up that? So everybody calls me Panditji so I enjoy doing it. I hope uh, you are open. Yes, please. Next question. Uh, sir, I don't have a question. Yeah. But I just wanted to ask something to the person who raised the question before me. She talked about the ne negative aspects of the religion and we should also highlight the positive aspect. So, uh, how can we justify whatever negativity is there in a particular religion or whatever negatives are practiced in a particular religion by highlighting the positives? Like, I can't say that... Uh, Okay, there are rapes in my neighborhood, but there's also Durga Puja. So that's the positive side that we are worshipping Devi, but uh, at the same time we are raping someone. So I did not really understand what the other person was trying to say. So the person who went before me. Yeah, yeah. Yes, next question. We will uh, respond to, uh, take few questions, then we'll. Okay, sir. Uh, we talked about the uh, anonymous uh, that how uh, uh, when the system are derived from uh, one is making in our society, right? Okay. So, like, uh, I want to ask that uh, we have uh, 40 Upanishads, and uh, in uh, his paper, An Invention of Caste, he has talked talks about that if we have to draw any value system, we should draw it uh, from Upanishads. Like, uh, Upanishads talks about the concept of Brahma, that uh, this is the basic element that is present in each and everybody. No matter what is is. So my question to you is this: that uh, um, yes, it is good to take uh, uh, values, good values from any religion uh, uh, that uh, supports the uh, you know, social world. Uh, so um, what do you think about this uh, these uh, Upanishads? That uh, how um, this value uh, value should be taken from this? See, you 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 must have heard about. New Testament, Old Testaments, because as years pass, people make amendments to what they have written. So similarly, from Vedas, there are Smritis and Sutas. It kept changing. There are so many scriptures. If you want to ask which scripture, like for Christian, there is Bible, there is Quran for the Muslims. So similarly, the, but when it comes to Hinduism, it's not one scripture. There are so many scriptures. Some scripture, there may be some addition which gives little more liberty to individual followers. But I will always see what is suitable to me, right? If it, one scripture gives a very comfortable position for me, I will stick to that. I will not follow something else which curtails my freedom, right? 
So, not to say yes, this scripture is fine. Our issue is which, cre which scripture creates problem. Our focus will go there. You do whatever you want to do, no issue there. But what you do should not affect what I do. Your liberty should not curtail my liberty. Your liberty may be to practice untouchability against me. If that is your liberty, then definitely I will work against that kind of liberty. Right? You also live, let live others. So my liberty is only to see you, discriminate you, brutalize you. Then how long will you wait? Every time when you come out, I will make fun. You, you, you will find simply surprise some of the behavior. Even now you have incidents. You one human being force other human being to defecate in public place and force that person to consume. These incidents in Madurai, a small village near Madurai, a, a state which led an anti-Brahmin movement. In such place you will find an incident of these things. A Shirul caste fellow was forced to defecate and forced to eat that. Now if he say, no, no, you see the positive things, you do ignore the negative, what, well, how will you ignore negatives? You may have hundred things, you may be having nice vegetarian biryani, this and that. If you put one poison in that, then your vegetarian biryani is gone. He, no, 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 you, you ignore only one drop poison, no. So I will, then the person who is suffering, he will wait for a moment, he will ask you to do the same thing again. So we cannot, as a society, we can't live in that kind of logic, right? Right? Everybody wants to live. In any way, whatever status you are, we are all going to die one day, right? We are all, Gandhi died, Ambedkar died. All religious gurus have died. Everybody is going to die. Before death, why do you indulge in all these things? Beating somebody, brutalizing somebody, raping somebody. There is something wrong with our mind. Instead of correcting our mind, I am mentally sick. I have become, see, in, within the caste structure, nobody can be normal. We are all suffering from some kind of a mental illness. It's a, I would say it is a software problem. Somebody getting out of the house in the morning, somebody comes, he runs back into the home and locks the door. So that person thinks that day is going to be bad for him. Is it not a mental illness? I am stepping out of my house, somebody else is coming before me, and you think that my day is going to be bad, I'll go back. Is it not something wrong with our own very understanding? Now, instead of saying, no, 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 why, you are, why do you come out when I, when I am out? You should be inside the house. You bring out law, you bring out rules and regulations, start beating the person. That is what the, uh, the challenge is. Do we promote such ideas as part of the social work values? My idea, at the individual level, we both fight. But do you promote that idea as the best idea to the globe? After all, every individual is a microcosm of this very universe, right? So every life has its own time. Every individual has a desire and ambitions to come up in life. How can somebody else decide, no, no, you can aspire to become only this, not this? That's very, 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 very regressive thinking, in my opinion. Whether you exercise through Hinduism or exercise through Islam or Christianity, the thinking is regressive, in my opinion. And as a social worker, we are supposed to be dedicated to bring change or uh, at least curb human suffering to whatever way possible, to whatever extent possible. That's what's so. Otherwise, you can remain as, as somebody else, as an activist who see that that there is untouchability is intact. You can do as an activist. But as a social worker, we shouldn't be doing this. That's the point I'm saying. As an individual, one can do whatever you want to do. As, a, as an individual, I can be a corrupt person. As an individual, I can be an MLE or an MP or a teacher. Whatever I want, I can be. But it cannot become an ethos for social work. That's the point I'm saying. Yes, please. Question on and then one more question. You want to say, the question on open I answered, that's what I'm saying. Every scripture goes an amendment as year passes and they make changes. Now, what you see in, in Vedas, you don't see in Manuspriti. What you see in Manuspriti, you can see, you don't see in subsequent scriptures. These are changes. Our, cha our challenge right now, let you write whatever scripture you want, but that should not lead to human suffering. Whether it is Upanishad, whether it is Vedas, or it is Quran, if that is causing, it's a source for some kind of a suffering, I think that has to be scrutinized. 
because the window uh, 1920 is not compatible with the present one. So we throw that and make a new laptop because it is not working. But as a society, we are still holding on to the archive system. No, no, it is very good. Naturally, society will, will hang one day. It will not function. Now, if we say today we have come a long way, all girls are equally going to studies. I know as a father of a two daughters, I know, given a chance, the girls can be more intelligent than boys. In argument, I cannot win my children. Who said that women are idiots and men are intelligent? This is fundamentally wrong with our very idea. Yes, please. Uh, so my question is, uh, so sir, about the universal, universal values of social work. Yeah. But uh, most of the time when we refer to the universal value of social work, yeah. it may be concentrated on particular area, especially yeah. pointing out rest or European thoughts and philosophy. But that thought and philosophies uh, may not able to understand and interpret certain situations happen in India because the custom and culture prolonged in India is very different. Yeah. Europe is class-based society and India is a class-based society. Yeah. So rather than concentrating Indian uh, social work theories uh, focusing on religion, uh. Uh, I always think like as a postmodern construct, uh, we want to think about the social uh, work theories in India, not in a religious way, but rather than that certain person. For example, uh, we are Ambedkar's uh, thought we can take and discuss, or there are uh, Sahodan Ayyapan in uh, South India, this thought, Pune's thought. So this diversity is rather than the universal thought must be more important. I have a very core like that. Okay. I fully agree. So, you can follow whatever you want as a core values. If we say, even India, India is fine, but I am coming to the point, India is not Hinduism alone. Na? There is also Buddhism, there is Sikhism. What uh, Brahminism advocated, there was Buddha countered that. In fact, European enlightenment came in 17th century. Buddha's enlightenment was in 5th century. We are not following that. We are not following. Buddha said, there is no God, there is no soul. Do we follow that? Rather we follow, we follow not one God, we are following 1000 Gods. So to say that I am saying that we are all taking from Europe, no. We, I, am, I am saying, I fully agree with you. I am not saying that you have to continue with what Americans have given. You, you follow what India has given. No? India has also given birth to Buddha and his ideas. Why you, in fact, much of that, those five values is rooted in Buddhism. Why do you say we have taken from America, you have taken from British? Why do you say that? Liberty, equality, fraternity is something fundamental to Buddhism. There are people who call it has come from French Revolution. No. Ambedkar himself has written that my, liber my conception of the society is rooted in liberty and equality, fraternity, which I have taken from my Lord Buddha, not from America. So to say that if you don't follow Brahminic ideas, that means we are taken from America, it is it's very narrow, very, very narrow understanding of our understanding what social work, basis of social work. Why not? Okay, you take taken from something Brahminism you want to take, why not? What about Buddhism? But it's not American based. It is Buddha's, it's our own. Fifth century, my dear. America and Europe came in 17th, 18th century. As early as fifth century, Buddha revolted against Brahminism. What do you want to, why can't you take from there? To say live, the idea of liberty, equality is all from Europe and America, it is, it's a politics behind it. I hope I answered your question. Yes, please. Sir, uh, you said that uh, like, uh, money is to develop, money is to make it, it's uh, like, they like, they have to right? So, but Upanishad with you on that i think but people do not follow that na now today brahmin is not 
the state of brahmin is not based on his credential which upanishad talks about i am a brahmin my son immediately become a brahmin uska badar credential hai nahi but he become a brahmin okay so that was my question that how can we interpret How can we can we draw value from Upanishad in social work? So you are you are you are saying Upanishad follows Buddhas, right? No, I am not saying that Upanishad follows Buddha. Ha. Actually, in real of religion, ha. Uh, following is I I don't like to use the term following like Buddha was following Upanishad. Or... But does does Upanishad recognize caste or not? No, sir, I don't think so. Ah, if that means then the caste should social work should work against caste. Does does whether that means social order should work against caste? We should annihilate caste. Yeah, Upanishad do not recognize caste, so that means it should not be there. Yeah, it should not be there. Yeah, definitely. Ah, so shall we now work towards annihilation of caste? Yes. We should uproot caste, right? Yes. Ah, then I agree with you. You know, you know, if Upanishad says caste should be eliminated, you just quote it and let us use it. No problem. I am for I am for Upanishad. If Upanishad says caste should be annihilated, you please incorporate that. Whether somebody who wrote Upanishad or somebody who wrote Buddha, no issue. We are here to mitigate human suffering. Caste causes immense amount of suffering. Okay, so, sir, my my objection was this, that you came to Manu Smriti and Upanishad in the same. Uh... I don't know. No, I, actually, I withdraw my. There is no problem. <laughs> I'll withdraw, but but that you agree. You agree that caste is a nuisance that has to be annihilated. If if Upanishad endorses that, with that also becomes a nuisance. Manu Smriti is a book that should be burned, right? Ah, uh, but unfortunately, it is there in the people's mind. You can burn the book. You can't break human mind, na? It is rooted in our mind. That is a virus. Yeah, but keeping Upanishad and Manu Smriti in a same box is a huge blunder. I agree with you. No problem. Upanishad may be different. But if woman is said directly, indirectly, endor endorses caste, then I don't see any difference as far as this issue is concerned. Thank you. Any other questions? So what do we then sum up social work? So social work give kind of questions raised, all those things. is dedicated to mitigate human sufferings the human suffering whichever form it comes from we have to work against that whether it comes through any religious roots we need to scrutinize that i am not referring to any religions because it is not that manushmriti is a problem bhagavad gita is not problem or quran is not a problem or a, no in fact gandhi once says how can uh, my uh, upanishad friend gandhi once said how can muslim be a muslim if he rejects quran how can christian be a christian if he rejects bible how can hindu be a hindu if he rejects varna which is a convertible terms of caste system now this is the question gandhi raised that means if you are a hindu whether you follow upanishad whether you follow bhagavad gita whether you follow vedas if you don't follow caste system then you are not a hindu that is the position of mahatma gandhi right you read in young india he has written this given that fact and we are all strong devotee of mahatma gandhi including myself there is no issue about it but that endorsing caste which condemns people at birth that somebody is born as lower somebody born as a uh, high caste in itself is something fundamentally wrong before the child is born you are saying ye to idiot hai before the child is born ye to super intelligent hai that's what caste system is all about so, so it is a baseless institutions which can no way defend it, whether you call it uh, see uh, that is why every institution every religious institutions goes through an amendment of its religious text but then we are holding on to a system which is century old which cannot be defended any time even in the past it could not be defended that is why buddha revolted it even today we cannot defend it because it condemns people but the, the fact simple said that men are intelligent women are not intelligent men should be given education women should not be given education.
can in any way justify this? 50% population should not be given education. And you say it is the right thing, whether you call it or whichever scriptures. I have to look at the concept of colonization. What does it mean? One group colonize the other group. We generally tend to think colonizing means British, colonizing Indians. That's the general understanding we have. India has been colonized already by so many groups. Caste structure is nothing but a, a structure of colonizing one group by the another. The Shudras colonized by the non-Shudras. Okay, the Shudras liberty is completely under the control of the non-Shudras. Non women were colonized by the men. The women's right is determined by, by the men. If you go with the literal meaning of colonization, this is what the actual process. But we think that colonization means British colonizing Indians. Now, what is decolonizing social work? That's an uh, important question. We think that social work has been colonized by the ideas of colonial force. So we have to get out of that. That is the question. Now, what is the ideology of the colonizer? What is that dominant ideology that most the British Americans talk about and many Marxism? Marxism is one of the important ideology we borrowed from outside India. Even Ambedkar himself has rejected such ideas. That in, in to understand Indian reality, Marxism is not the right ideology. Because Marxism says only two class. Proletariat and bourgeois, rich and the poor. In India, the struggle is not between rich and the poor. The struggle is, by and large, is between different caste groups. That is why he uses the word Hindu bourgeois and Hindu proletariat. It is not bourgeois and proletariat. Ambedkar calls Hindu bourgeois and Hindu proletariat. Marx said, workers of the world unite. You have nothing to lose but your chain. And Ambedkar says, if the same slogan, if you can raise in India, workers of the world may unite, but workers of the Indians will not unite, because the Indian workers are not workers in, uh, you know, as a one category. Brahmin workers, Chatriya workers, Vaishya workers, Shudra workers, Nadi Shudra workers, workers of Shudras will come together, but they will not come together with the workers of the Ati Shudras. Paradalis. Workers of the Brahmin will come together, but they will not come together with the workers of the Shudras. So the workers remain divided on caste lines. Now when you say decolonizing social work, the moment you take social work, what is the ideology we use in social work? So any ideology that comes from outside India, we should throw this ideology and then evolve our own ideology. In, in simple terms, that's what I would say decolonizing social work. because. Social work in India is under the control of the colonial ideologies. So we have to throw those ideologies. And if you have to go clearly, what are those ideologies? Any ideology which is different from Hindu ideologies, we can say they are the colonial ideologies. Or non-Indian ideologies. There could be many ideologies. But then why do we say that, for example, India, the tribal communities, they have their own way of living. There is absolute democracy, liberty within the, the tribal culture. Now, when you impose what is generally understood as the way of living together, some way that is going to sabotage the unique culture, the tribal communities in India, we have. So we don't want that colonial way of thinking. A colonial way of thinking, we don't want. What, what we call as a modernity, again it has varieties of it. Tribals, each, each region has its own culture and its own way of defining what is liberty and collective living. Whether social work has recognized those things, whether they have been made part of social work, it's a, it's a question. So when I say decolonizing social work, what comes to my mind is that anything that is taken from outside, 
should be thrown out. That's what we are talking about. Now, what are those things we have taken from outside which should be thrown out? Is a question. If I say Marxism in simple terms, that Marxist ideology is okay compared to the caste ideology. So I would say, why should I throw Marxism? If an ideology we follow, which is primarily rooted in caste system, that should be thrown out, in my opinion. The tribal communities may say, the British, whatever they consider the modernity as an ideology, that is not gelling very well with the what the tribal communities in India, the kind of lifestyle they lead, if that is going to support it, their way of living, probably it is okay for them to decolonize socialism, uh, 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 social work. But if you look at the caste question, the colonial ideas to some extent have been useful to mitigate the negative impact of the caste system. To that extent, probably those, what we call as liberty, liber liberty, equality, fraternity, those things, which generally understood to be something come from French Revolution. If you take that it has come from French Revolution, probably we can say, you are right to say that, uh, throw these ideas. But these ideas are rooted primarily in Buddhism. So why should I throw this? If you say it has come from outside, you can, you can find, but in my own reading, these ideas are not from outside, these are ideas that are 5th century old. Why should I throw that? So it is a debatable uh, question at this point in time. I would say we have not come to a clear understanding of those kind of ideas affect tribal community differently and Dalit communities differently. So we can't take a position on this. Decolonizing social work, Okay, we do decolonization. Then fill the cap with what? There is a question. If you throw that, that's fine, absolutely. Then fill with what? All that we are talking about so far, we'll fill that with that idea, which can be counterproductive, which can be, which can drag us backward, uh, uh, which is not a good for the Indian society. I would say a progressive Indian society. I think that's what my response at this point in time. <laughs> yes. See, that, that is why I am saying, there is nothing called Dalit, I, I will not say, although we have a specialization, if you ask me a personal thing, to say that it is Dalit perspective, to say it is women perspective, again it is a very narrow way of looking at it. It is a human perspective, it is a human perspective. Dalit perspective means, huh, this has come from there, naturally I will develop enmity towards that. This is Dalit perspective. Baba, this is a perspective every, everyone should follow. If you say it is a Brahmin perspective, then it has to, if you say that this is one perspective, this is a dominant perspective, which is rooted in caste and religion, so then I have no option but to bring, okay, here I am giving you Dalit perspective, here I am giving you feminist perspective. So, to give an identity to a perspective becomes in the longer run, become a counterproductive. So, if you ask me, you, it is a perspective, I, again I don't want as a perspective from below. If you say perspective from below, that means you are acknowledging that structure. There is a, there's a perspective above, there is a perspective below and then again also that becomes a counterproductive. It is a perspective, probably say, which, which will lead to liberty equality of everybody. So I, I really don't want to bracket it as a Dalit perspective. Probably you can say liberal perspective <laughs> or it's a human perspective. Because otherwise Dalit perspective means there is enmity. Because if you say, this is a perspective of one group, it will go against the perspective of another group. That in the longer run, then we will re remain, we'll remain divided. That should not be there. We have aimed for Vasudeva Kudumbangam, now you are saying Dalit perspective and Brahmin perspective. No. So that can be a problem. It, it, but it is a, this is a debate, uh, is uh, ever in the move. Uh, I think we need to work towards it. We have, to, we have not come, I, am, at least I would say I have not come to a point. We have resolved the issue. No. Okay. What's time now? It's one o'clock already. Maybe one or two questions, please. Any questions? Yeah,
students from Myanmar. Ah. Uh -huh. Okay. In the past, I was appreciated to be a Buddhist. I have. <coughs> Buddhism is divided from the idea. We believe on the. We follow the expression of Buddha. Buddha. Especially the mark. The mark. There is two, uh, three of Wada, Bodhis, Bodhis and Mahayana, Bodhis in our country. Yes, uh, I'm, I will run through, through my question. How is Bodhis is the part of Hinduism? And then I mean Bodhis are divided from India to our country. But now in that situation, is a low population and Bodhis population in India. When we look at the history of history in India, uh, their population, Buddhist and population grow with in India is a small, small. When we compare the uh, Hinduism population grow with Muslim population grow with in India, this is one question. Another question is the third, second question is what will happen in the Buddhist society, Muslim society? When the lower, when the lower class of the caste system is trying to try to transport another society or a purpose of free to change the caste system. And then another one is in the third question is what will happen in the caste system when we, when all the all the lowest lowest or lowest class of the caste system, the left or untouchable, all are changed to them. Another, another religion like like this Christian, Buddhism, yeah, and Muslims like this because of they have, they have also their responsibility and task and between the caste system who will take the their job their task and the caste system this is I don't know I couldn't follow much of this uh, uh, this question uh, you understood. Myanmar and how they follow Dhamma and Navayana ah. uh, Buddhism there. Okay. Said, but the spread of Buddhism in India has been very small. Okay. So that was one question. Okay. Uh, then one question on what happens if the Ati Shudras convert into another religion, then what does that do to caste? Hmm. Is a question. Okay. And the third question? There were three questions. Three right? question is what will happen in the in the caste system will be. Because when all when, when all the, the left and as that to be a transport another I got your first question and the third question, I think. Yes. The first question was about the population, right? Why Buddhists are not spread much here. Right? That was one. The third was what happens if uh, Atishudras convert to Buddhism or another religion? Yes. So what happens to the caste system? Yes, the yes, second question. Yes. Second question. Se second question is, and then what will happen if the transport? I I mean like this. When I I am the the lower caste of the Hinduism. When I what happen when I transport to another religion like this Muslim? Muslim and Christian like this. I what happens to you as an individual when you uh, yes, yes, yes. So that's related to another question that is caste in India only Hinduism or does it syncretically get practiced in other religions? Okay. I hope and I understood some questions, so let me respond. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> when there is a, some basic understanding of Buddhism the root of which, the foundation of which is, uh, is basically liberty, equality, uh, fraternity. You will find all the religion in the world believes that there is a God who created the universe. So you need to go to the God to resolve your problem. Where Buddha says, Buddhism says, there is no God, there is no soul. Once you die, you are dying. That's why you are gone. There is no reincarnation of your soul. There is no rebirth. There is no next birth. So some of those, those things. So 
that, the, that is a fundamental difference, difference between Buddhism and all other religions in the world. All other religions in the world, there is God. Here in Buddha, there is no God. There, at one level, there is a fundamental difference. Then, among Buddhists, how will you resolve your problem? It says, you are the cause of your problem, so you alone have to find a solution. There is no miracle that happened that, that by going to uh, God and maybe giving some offerings, like uh, in we have uh, breaking coconuts or lighting candles and what. No, that is not the way you are going to solve your problem because you are the part of the problem, you create the problem, so you solve your problem. So suffering is universal. So nobody can live a life without suffering. Suffering is universal. There are ways to lead a life so that you can minimize sufferings. And that's what fourth fourth path and all those uh, details are there. Then here in India, when there was Indian history, according to Ambedkar, is the history of struggle between Brahmanism and Buddhism. The Brahmanism as an ideology, according to Ambedkar, is believes in that idea that God is the creator. And God did not create as equal, but God created everybody as unequals. Uh, there is a hierarchy and there are roles defined. You can't deviate from that role. But if you go into Buddhist line, that, that is not the conception that everybody is equal. Everybody is equal, right? What you achieve is based on probably your efforts and uh, what you do uh, at this point in time. Um, so that, that is at one level, there is a difference between. In... So, there was a struggle between Buddhism, Brahmanism and Buddhism. Brahmanism overpowered Buddhism. So, Buddhism were completely eliminated. So, many Buddhists, uh, probably say evangelists, were brutalized. And you have a lot of history talking about it, how those, those who were into spreading Buddhism were brutalized. There is a history behind all those things. But then, Ambedkar coming and revitalizing that, reviving that traditions and when he said as long as I remain a Hindu I will be either an upper caste or a lower caste, I can never become a human being. So, I was born a Hindu, which was not in my hand, but I will not die as a Hindu. He chose to with all other religions, he embraced Buddhism because that is the only religion according to him a religion that cannot stand the test of science is no religion. A religion that cannot test the uh, uh, stand with the test of science is no religion. And according to Ambedkar, that Buddhism can stand all the tests of science. So it is purely science. So I am I am willing to uh, move to Buddhism. He, since he was a popular person, a popular leader, along with him, everybody who faced suffering because of caste system. Followed him. Again, it, those who followed him by and large belong to the very caste he belonged to. But now you will find the Buddhist population is slowly increasing as education spreads. People understand rationality, science. Educate, the Buddhists are increasing in number. But then Buddhism took root in other religions, so other countries have to con take over and the Buddhist population is there. And which are the countries you know uh, uh, better. Then, what is that third question? Ah, if a, if a so-called the low caste convert to other religion, the, all, the, all of them leave Buddhism, Hinduism, caste system and con become a Buddhist, what will happen to the caste system? The caste system will collapse. If the caste system will collapse, it's a big bolt to the Hinduism. And that is why there is a big fight not to allow Indians to convert to Buddhism. The, on the, the dominant, the Hindu leadership is trying its best not to let people convert from Hinduism to any other religion. The Shilukas are also converting to Islam, they are also converting to Christianity, they are also converting to Buddhism in large number. So, uh, there, are, there are special laws that you should not convert. There are laws against conversion. That is also going on. But if all the Hindus converted to non-Hindu religion, then the Hindu population will come down drastically and that is why uh, it has its own political uh, religious implications. So there is an opposition to conversion, especially. Uh, what is the other question? What is the experience of the individual who 
ओके ना व्हाट इज द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट व्हाट इज द एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ इंडिविजुअल्स कन्वर्टेड टू क्रिस्टियनिटी और इस्लाम और बुद्धिस्ट सिंस इन इंडिया इन इंडिया बुद्धिस्ट मींस 80 टू 90 परसेंट दे बेसिकली शेड्यूल कास्ट आई मीन दलिस आर द लोअर कास्ट अकेडमिक स्टार्टेड रेगनाइजिंग दम बिसाइड द कॉमन पीपल they had started calling them as new buddhist they are buddhist but they are new buddhist that very identity as a new buddhist gives them they are basically shuru caste they are low caste so you will find many people after the, after conversion also facing caste discriminations so the new buddhist have not become a buddhist although they have embraced the large society does not recognize them as buddhist they still treat them as a schedule caste and they also face untouchability but definitely it has changed their mindset nobody can now say no no all this karma theory does not work anymore with them they don't follow all those things you will find even in maharashtra this particular state you will find that the one single community mahar community which converted along with the, uh, dr ambedkar in terms of their educational economic achievement no other schedule caste could reach that level so it is definitely a positive move and their thinking is very rational and scientific they don't bother whether you recognize me as shirk or whatever doesn't matter i'll keep going so their state of mind if you say state of mind they are very progressive and they don't suffer the extent those shirk has who still remain in hindu fold they don't suffer that much untouchability because they also know why what's happening and they also challenge they also counter they also use existing law it is a dichotomy it is a dichotomy even after conversion they do face problems um, but their situation is relatively better than others who are not converted that's what i would say yes question about reservation who gets reservation after conversion now earlier the constitution of india has recognized certain special benefits for the protection of the so called low caste who are constitutional recognized scheduled caste they have certain special constitutional provisions number 1 there are special laws for example prevention of untouchability act protection of civil rights act early it was known as civil rights act then it big 1975 then the uh, uh, the sc the scheduled castes and scheduled tribes prevention of atrocities act there are two special laws one law is against practice of untouchability the yet another law which was passed in 1989 is a law against crimes committed against the scheduled castes so they they can make use of these two laws for their own protection and in addition their members can contest election certain constituencies have been reserved for them to contest election so they become mlas and mps and raise their voice in uh, in major decision making bodies like uh, even at the lower level municipal level panchayat level assembly level and parliament level so there are constitutional provision and then there is also provision under article uh, 15 16 46 um certain percentage of uh, seats in academic institutions reserved for this community for the scheduled caste 15% for the scheduled tribe it's 7.5% uh, admissions are reserved for these communities and similarly even for employment the same percentage the percentage is fixed on the basis of their populations it is reserved for them it has been working since 1950 but initially it was given only for those who remain in hindu fold in 1950 it was recognized only for those scheduled castes who remain in hindu fold then certain communities in sikhism like majbi sikhs and there are few other uh, caste groups within sikhism they fought so they were also recognized for certain special benefits because these reservation has a connection in what we known as the presidential order of 1950 so they are amend you know interestingly in india who is a hindu who is a christian who is a muslim who is a muslim who is a christian that, that they, they have a different definition who is a hindu the definition you should understand very interesting definition anybody who is not a christian who is not a muslim is a hindu so it does not say those who like in christianity those who follow bible or in islam those who follow quran there are clear things but in case of hinduism it has been defined anybody who is not a christian who is not a, a muslim is a hindu 
So in 19, after uh, when the Sikh community revolted, protested, then they amended the 1950 <laughs> presidential order stating that anybody who is not a Christian, who is not a Muslim, who is not a Sikh, sorry, Sikhism was also included. Then in 1989, Buddhists were also brought under the uh, scheduled caste. So they are a Buddhist, but still this community uh, enjoy these reservation benefits. So even after conversion, although they have converted to religion which does not recognize caste, the fact that they, even after conversion, suffer from untouchability and caste discrimination, they also made part of the list of castes for special benefits. So conversion, right now, if anybody convert to Islam, anybody convert to Christianity, they become ineligible for reservations. Yeah, please. Uh, I have more about faith oriented work. Like, in my personal opinion, uh, for me, uh, religious, is, religious base is not good for my social work. Yeah. But the thing on faith, like when we uh, discuss with people, people are very assimilated with their own religions. So, you need to give some references to ensure that we see that pragmatic approach. Hmm. See, religion is your, it is your choice. Social work, it is nothing to do with the religion. You remain wherever you are, whatever you feel comfortable. Social work should not say, no, no, you should not stay in this religion, no. You remain in your own religion, that is what you are comfortable, you, are, you stay wherever you want. But when it comes to social work values, if any religious traits which endorses subjugation anyway, that cannot become a social work values. That is the only way I differ. Religion is a personal charge. You remain wherever you are. Whichever religion you want to follow, that's fine. Social work has nothing to do with that. Yeah. Sir, yes, please. My question was that you said that uh, those were the Ati Shudras, they were converted to Buddhism. And uh, you said that I, uh, the people who are from lower caste, if they are converted to another religion, they are uh, a status or there will be some changes, so caste system will be collapsed. But now we are saying like that uh, caste system is not collapsed, it's become rigid. So how can you say that the people from lower caste, if converted to another religion, their status in the society will change or in the hierarchy that will be changed? No, that will not change. If people who obey the Atishudras, they converted to Buddhism, but still they are inferior in the society. They are in the society. So that is my See, we are looking at it in a relative term. Compared to the earlier position, what you are today. So there is some of, see, first forget about what others recognize or not. As an individual who convert to other religion, it gives so much of a pride and confidence. Whether you recognize that they are not doesn't matter. As a person, like Ambedkar said, I was a born a Hindu, I will not die as a Hindu. And after conversion, it's a it's a liberative mindset. So I, you, you, you don't recognize me, it doesn't matter. Because your mind is stuck to one particular regressive thinking. So I, I, I cannot bother about that beyond a point. You remain, you, you just continue, hold on. I have no issue. So I will, this is for my present position as a Buddhist, or as a Muslim, or as a Christian. It's very liberative. So I'm fine with you, no problem. You recognize, you don't recognize, it's a problem. It is a challenge, I agree with you. But the state of mind of that person who converted is definitely more, much comfortable, more liberative. So it will come. See, if now in Maharashtra or in city, if anybody you say, Mahar, you are untouchable, you go, no, no problem, you go on telling, I don't value much. We know even Maharashtra, rural part, just because some shuttle cars fellow uh, uh, telephone me, there is a happy, what is that, uh, Ambedkar uh, Jaibim. The ringtone was Jai Bhim and he was killed for it. So, on the one hand, how inhuman, this, this only reflects Manu is still living. Whether we call it as he said, whether it is Upanishad or Bhagavad Gita. What is, who is very strong in the mindset is still Manu. Bhagavad Gita may say anything, Upanishad may anything, but who, who is followed? It's still Manu, Manu is followed. 
people still recognize manu whatever manu said people practice so what you write is immaterial what i hold on to in my mind that becomes an issue now so it is a mindset in fact uh, uh, sami vivekananda said caste is a mindset caste is a mindset i am here standing before you as a teacher so i am a brahmin at this point in time my mindset i am a brahmin i move out somebody is in trouble i am going to rescue i am a chatriya i am going to canteen negotiating some khana i become a vaishya when i go back to room i find i find the road is little dirty i am trying to clean it i become a shudra then so caste is not by physical it's a state of mind and this keep changing it is nothing to it it cannot be fixed so everybody is a brahmin chatriya vaishya shudra adishudra by way of what you do in a given time it cannot be fixed so it's a state of mind that's the that is the definition given by uh, sami vivekananda now if you agree that it is fine but then manu says no no it is fixed if you are born a brahmin you die a brahmin if you are born a dalit you die a dalit there is no change possible change is possible according to karma theory in the next birth next birth kon kisko janta hai abhi bhook lag raha hai mujhe i want to eat if you say no no you starve it next birth you will be promoted that is a very very regressive ideas very regressive ideas so you, you now as a social work and the philosophy which is basically to mitigate human suffering now what you want to take this idea or you want to take some liberal ideas that is the question please we have stop here i uh, there may be more questions and issues uh, some of you may be i think provoked by some of uh, what you have heard today the contradictions but uh, you are most welcome to contact professor ramaya after the class you can come and have a discussion with him or contact him later and we'll carry forward the discussions in our uh, next class all of us will be meeting in our respective sections uh, next thursday okay so uh, the last the last note i think we discussed a very sensitive issue in uh, this hall very comfortably it has to be taken in a pure academic spirit this is not you know like a, you know one religion pitched against another religion and it should be taken only in that spirit it is for your critical reflections you don't have to follow whatever i said but you can also reflect on this whatever i said and it should be limited to that extent only don't stretch it beyond this point i suppose you will value what i am saying otherwise don't start a facebook uh, communication sure all the best hope you have taken everything positively bye bye thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you.